Hi guys, Jeff here. Uh, this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the stuff you're going to need to download, or want to download, when it comes to speedrunning Dark Souls 2 Skull of the First Sin. It's going to be pretty much the same for vanilla. The only difference is going to be the uh, cheat engine table you want to use for Baby Jump Mod, or the DLL you want to use for Baby Jump Mod. So, um... Yeah, a lot to get set up, unfortunately. First thing you're going to note, if you want your run to be valid on the Dark Souls 2 leaderboards, you are going to need to lock your frame rate. If you look at my game, you should notice a little 60 number in the top corner. That's my frame rate counter. And you do this using a piece of software called River Tuner. Uh, you can download RiverTuner on its own, or the much more reliable way to download it is through MSI Afterburner. So this is the where we'll link in the description. All the links are going to be in the description, by the way. So you just download Afterburner, and then at some point there should be an option to the download to install RiverTuner as well, at which point you're going to want to download that. Uh, once you get RiverTuner downloaded, you're going to need to Click the Windows key to open it, and then you need to look in the, uh, the sort of bottom corner where your network settings and audio settings are. Click the little up arrow, and you'll need to find it there to actually open up the window. And when you do open up the window, it should look a little bit like this. Uh, you're well, bigger. You'll notice for Dark Souls 2, my settings are. Uh, show on a screen display. Uh, frame rate limit has to be set at 60. This is the entire point. You have to be locking your game's FPS to 60. Uh, this stuff, you can just decide how big you want it. And you need to make sure that it's connected to your DOS 2. So you'd add this and then it'll open a thing where you can find the game file. And yeah, so. You can find a tutorial for RiverTuner online, but basically add your game file as a profile, set the frame rate limit to 60, and make sure it's the on screen display. Then you should open up the game, um, give it a few seconds, and the 60 should show up in the corner. So that's the first thing you're going to need. Second thing you're going to need is Cheat Engine. Uh, we don't necessarily need, need Cheat Engine, but you will probably want Cheat Engine for two reasons. Number one, there's a mod that you use, or you're allowed to use, called, cheat, uh, called Baby Jump Mod. This removes a bug in the game where your jump distance is tied to your CPU usage, meaning you'll get shorter jumps if you have a weaker CPU. So that was ruled as giving too much of an unfair advantage to people with beefier PCs. So we have a mod that removes that. And you can either run that mod with a DLL or through a cheat engine table. Both of them are going to be linked in the description. And there's also going to be two cheat engine links. There's going to be one to the official cheat engine download and another one to a compiled version made by Nia Speedrunner Vod G1400 which is similar, which is basically the exact same as the official version, but um, has been compiled, so you don't have to click through any menus where it's going to try and install any adware. The only disadvantage is it's not going to update, whereas the actual download will update. And uh, You can find the cheat engine table on the speedrun.com slash Dark Souls 2 Scholars of First in Resources tab, and it's just right up here, or there's a DLL which you just drag into your game files you can use instead of the cheat table, although I have heard from Nick that since using the DLL he's had issues using other cheat tables, which is the second reason you might want cheat engine, is that for efficient practice, having a cheat table so you can spawn in items or instant kill enemies or have unlimited health can make practicing some stuff a lot easier. For example, one thing I like to do to practice bosses is spawn in a broken rapier, set my health to infinite so I can't die, 
and then just fight that boss for like half an hour till I learn the attacks. They're very useful way of practicing things. Um, live split, very important piece of software you're going to want because if you want your runs to be timed in game time rather than real time, so removing the time and load screens, which you do want because that's how you compete, you're going to need to download live split. So uh, just go to this website, download live split. When you open it the first time, it should look something like this. Uh, not very impressive. But you can left click on that and then click edit splits. Left click, no, right click on that and click edit, spl edit splits, and this will pop up. From here, you're going to want to do two things. Number one, you're going to want to choose all your segment names. So um, uh, you'd have Last Giant, Rotten One, etc., etc. Uh, depending on which route you're running, these can be different. And depending on where you like to split, some people like to split after the Pursuer, some people like to split after Najka, some people only split on loading screens for perfectly accurate splits. It's all just personal preference, really. The second thing you want to do is find the game. It's going to be Dark Souls 2. Type in this. Just follow off the first sin. Uh, you don't really need to choose the category, but you can. And then here you're going to see load room removal is available by Dread. You're going to want to activate that. And then. Um, this is going to add load removal to your splits, but one more thing you're going to have to do is, again, right click on the little live split tab, and you're going to want to compare against uh, game time rather than real time. I, I don't know how I can get OBS to capture this, but just right click, little drop up, pop up menu is going to appear. Scroll down to compare against and then click game time. And then your split should start working in uh, in game time or load removal. Uh, you're also going to want to go into settings. I can show. Add a window cap. One moment. Here, you're going to want to set your hotkeys for live split. So, uh, these ones are a bit weird because this is my 17k installation. But uh, basically, uh, most people have start split on a numpad thing. So, for me, I use start split on numpad 1, reset on numpad 3, undo on numpad 7, skip on numpad 4. Nine. The only ones you'll really need are start and split and reset. And you also want to make sure that global hotkeys is enabled because otherwise it's not going to pick up these hotkeys while you're playing the game. And that's just not going to work. So uh, get that set up and that should be cheat engine about. Not cheat engine. That should be your live split pretty much set up. If you have any issues, just. Uh, Go and ask in the next important thing, which is the Feed Souls Discord server. You're going to want to join this. Uh, nice, cool, uh, cool little background there. You can find it by going on any Souls game, looking in the side, and you'll see a little Discord link. Any Souls game on speedrun.com. Little Discord tab there. Click that. It'll take you to the Discord server. And that's where you're going to find all the cool people that can help you out. You're mostly just going to want to use the uh, DS2 discussion, DS2 scholar channels. That's where all the uh, scholar people will help you out. Or the Dark Souls 2 people will help you out. Uh, it doesn't really matter which, but if you are planning on running scholar, then just stick in the scholar one so they know that's the version you're going to be using. And uh, yeah, there's no such thing as stupid questions there. So, um... Ask anything, I guess.
The uh, next thing you're going to want is Speed Source Save Organizer. This is a piece of software that lets you import and re-download saves for Dark Souls 2. Basically lets you uh, load up and reboot save states really quickly. So if I wanted to practice something like uh, the Rotten, where after I kill him, he's dead and not have to start the game to fight him, I can just make a save state outside, quit out, import the save state, and load it up. I'm not going to go over that too much because there's this really good wiki page that goes over how to do it all, which I'll link below. And the last thing you're going to want to do is get your um, auto run, which is a mouse and keyboard specific feature. You're going to equip that, or not equip, bind that to a button on your controller if you're running with controller. And uh, there's a tutorial by Mr. Brood that shows you how to do that, which I'll also link below because I don't know how to do it. I run with keyboard and mouse. I believe that's pretty much everything that you need to download to get set up. And all these links are going to be in the description. Yeah. Uh, good luck, I guess.